recording. All right. Sweet. All right. Uh, we have we have Jamal back on the show. Uh, he was kind of the professor that introduced me to the myth of Sisyphus, actually. Um, I had heard of Camus in my senior English class in high school uh, because we read The Stranger. But I believe in in your class, I think it was either ethics or uh, or was what was that class? It was like logic and oh yeah, the critical thinking. Yeah, no, it would have been critical thinking. Ethics. Yeah, yeah. Ethics. Okay. Yeah. Well, welcome back. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. Thank you. I'm excited. So, yeah. So um. So yeah, I, I brought you on the show because I wanted to go. Um, kind of have a discussion on an absurd reasoning, which is the first chapter of the myth of Sisyphus, and it's the one that um, I believe you uh, in your class you taught an absurd reasoning, and you taught the actual just the the myth of Sisyphus, right? Yes. I don't remember yeah. going over the the middle two chapters. No, yeah, so just that first, and I don't even know it was the full, whole whole chapter, but um, yeah, yeah, sweet, yeah, so. Um, I guess my first question there would be, um, what is the absurd to you, and when did you first encounter a, encounter it? Not um, from a literature standpoint, like, sure. but when did you first personally experience the feeling of the absurd? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, so the absurd. I mean, I, I, I guess the way I I think of um, the absurd is. Um, you know, I, I mean, I tend to, I think like all of us, right, tend to sort yeah. of place meaning and concepts and all sorts of things on like my life, right? Yeah. And, um, and like the absurd is when I realize that that I have actually been the one creating all of those, those, those ideas, those concepts, that meaning, that story, right, that's been going on. Um, and, and so I think there's a few times that I've, I've encountered the absurd, um, you know, pretty like, kind of forcefully um forcefully yeah i mean i think maybe so, so there's like sort of like i mean it, it sort of comes in in with different sorts of emotions right so like yeah. i think a, a really good example of, of when i've experienced the absurd is um um having children um so okay. this isn't necessarily the first time i i, I experienced the absurd um, but but having children because it's this kind of moment where where I realize like I am like, I'm like there's this like living being coming into this world right that like um, that, I mean almost this sort of like pointlessness to it it, it seems yeah. right like um, but but there's also this like no but like this is like embracing life right I mean as, as yeah. Camus talks about the experience right like yes. here here's a being that is going to experience reality as it is you know and um and and so there's a yeah a weird sort of i mean you, you he, he talks a lot about it's it's not exactly illogical right but there's this like lack of of of, of reasoning that sort of goes into that that affirming of, of of life in that way i think um and you know i've i've experienced it um i think at times in like nature and in meditation um you know those those are you know moments where um it, it's almost like scales falling you know um where i falling yeah yeah where it's like i i you know i, I sort of feel an immediacy um you know in, in in the world right um so there's you know like and again camus like talks about like here you have this world you know and then you have like me the person right and and like the absurd shows up when when they like you know when i recognize that they're like running up against one another um and i've you know usually there's like some padding there right like i i, I create something to soften all of that for me um and um and i think that that um in those moments right like i mean it can be like scary it can be like um almost like kind of that like edge of cliff feeling right yeah like, you know like, yeah, you, kind like, of get I don't know, you know like yeah. you know um and 
and I think we'll talk about this, right? And because I'm I'm curious about a bit about like the the experience of like non-self in, in Buddhism, right? And 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 if there's a relationship, you know, with this um, sort of thing, or if that's that's maybe one of these um, one of these sort of philosophical um, sort of suicides that that Kemi talks about, um, right? But but there does seem to be at least, and and, and maybe it's it's that um, you know at those moments like it's not like myself that's gone, but like a self that I have I've manufactured that's suddenly gone, um, you know, that, that disappears. Yeah. Uh, so uh, kind of that, uh, that ego death that people experience through right. um, meditation. Uh, are you saying that the enlightenment, that this Buddhist enlightenment is a sort of philosophical suicide? Oh, I, I don't know. In a sense, right? like, I think that's, yeah, that's sort of what I'm asking or kind of what I'm questioning in my mind is, is whether that's the same kind of move that he, he's saying that people like Kierkegaard um, and other kind of religious existentialists yep. um, do, right. That they have, have like shifted said, okay, fine. Like absurd, but like, you know, God is the absurd. Right. Um, and I can embrace it in that way. Um, and you know, has is the Buddha doing the same sort of thing by by kind of finding ways outside of of you know suffering, right? Finding a way to, yep. to sort of give up suffering, right? Or su suffering something that is essential to this experience of, of the absurd, right? Um, and and so that's that's sort of the the you know what I'm I'm asking, right? In that, I mean, I, I don't know that I have an answer um, for that. Um, so, but I think, you know, maybe the, 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 the time that I, um, and, and, you know, Camus will talk about, right, like how the absurd can happen. I think he talks about like on the street corner, right? It can just be these like very right. mundane just moments. In the face, right? It's just like, oh my gosh, yeah, here, like it's absurd. Or it can hap yeah. happen when like really major things occur, right? So he's writing this when, when, essentially France is getting occupied. Yep. Right. Yep. And so like, there's like, you know, sort of the big thing. And, and I, I certainly had that experience. I think when, when, um, um, you know, I, I think I talked on the, 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 the show before about um, my recovery from alcoholism. Right. And so like yep. my life fell apart, you know, and when, um, when, when the alcoholism was getting worse, like I was using that, right. I was using the alcohol as, as that way of, of, of softening the world, right. So that's what I was trying to do with it. Right. Yeah. Like, and then like when that went away and I, I kind of like saw like, Oh my goodness, like everything that I've been doing, right. Like until now, like doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. Well, there's this, there's this moment in the myth of Sisyphus when Camus is comparing mysticism to uh to absurdism and the the mystic does oh, sort of the yeah, same mysticism, thing. Sorry, yes yep yep the the mystic will surrender themselves to their god right right in the same way that the absurdist surrenders themselves to that you know that subtle indifference to the world that uh that he talks about in the stranger you know with uh, with Merceau at the end when right. he's about to get executed and uh and he says that he right. found himself sinking into that subtle indifference of the world, so much like a right. brother to him. Yeah. And I wonder there if yeah. there's, because uh, I wonder there if there is a sort of a leap to, um, if there's some kind of a leap to like just accepting the indifference of the world. Um, mm. So is 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 Camus too like committing the same? Yeah, but but it's in yeah. a different it's a different different uh a different context, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and he uses. I mean, it's it's interesting because he'll you know talk about revolt, but other times yes. he'll use language like accept, right? Yes. And and so it's, it's like he's and, and I think this is the problem with something like the absurd is it's absurd, right? So it cannot. It's it, it, and, and maybe this is a good way of comparing it to to mysticism is the the experience of it. Um, is not something that's easily um, put into language, yes. right? Because it's absurd, right? In the same way, like the mystic cannot easily put their experience into language um, because it's it's kind of beyond language, beyond reasoning, right? Um, 
Well, it's it, it's a revolt and it's an acceptance, right? It's uh, right, it's accepting good. the revolt in a sense. Because he, he also had the example of uh, of like bringing a knife to like a group of people with swords or something like that. And how you kind of have to just accept the fight, right? Right. Um, but... Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. The, the 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 sword to the yeah to to the machine guns. I think is what he said. Yeah. I like yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Like... yeah. Knife to a gunfight. Yeah. It's like whoops. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So, so yeah, how do you sort of? Well, I did want to ask you what you thought about um, how his version of absurdism, the way that Camus talked about absurdism, how that relates to Buddhism and your own thoughts on, on Buddhism. Yeah, good. So I, I think that um, of, of course they're, they're starting at, at a similar place for sure. Right. Like, so, you know, there's both, both of them are, are kind of accepting um initially that like the world um is not what i i um, want it to be right like or at least initially right like um yes it's, it's not the kind of world that i i want right i want a world that's going to give me you know comfort and pleasure and and all of those sorts of things and and you know both of them are i think recognizing that you know that is um that takes away your freedom right um you know, and, and that actually causes way more suffering um, in the end. Um, so they're both they both see that, and I, I think they they're both honest about um, about reality in that way. Um, you know, the other thing is is like they both I think would, would like Buddhism will talk about attachment, right? Like that the, yeah. you know one of our um, and, and desire and you know these things, but 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 attachment is is one of the things that that produces um, uh, the suffering, right? um you know that the world is constantly changing right um and, and and so when i'm attached to it like i suffer because of its its change and you know i think camus would would um certainly agree right that the world is 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 constantly changing that's part of its absurdity um you know and and so how do i deal with that right um and you know, one of the ways, you know, Buddhism talks about, right, is non-attachment um, to things, right? And so, you know, perhaps this is this kind of indifference that, that arises, you know, for Kenya, yeah. right? I've, I've got to have a, a type of indifference to things, um, you know, in order to um, to sort of deal with it. And also, like, this this quantity versus quality, you know, towards yes. the, the yes. end of the chapter, yep. I think is the same, the same thing, right? Where... Um, you know, the, the Buddha is going to say, like, don't sort of consider any of your experiences like, you know, good or bad. Right. Like, you know, um, and and I think that that's the quantity here. You know, I first read that. I'm like, well, you know, what are you talking about? Kemu? Like, of course, we want, you know, high quality experiences. Like, yeah. who cares how many I have? Like, I want high quality. And it's like, well, no, like an experience is an experience, no matter what it is, whether you're on that, you know, the bus and or walking down the street or sitting in in a boring class or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever it happens to be, right? Or you're doing, you know, something that you enjoy, right? Like, you know, Kemi playing soccer um, or, you know, going to a movie or, or, you know, whatever, right? And, And so there's, now, do we end up with a kind of another type of leveling here? I don't, I don't think so right because what do you mean another type of leveling right so so he'll he he mentions this a a little bit where when he's talking about philosophical suicide yeah that um that these these philosophers one of the things that they have recognized um that that he agrees with is that like through either reason or through you know Uh, the ethical for Kant or Kierkegaard or, or you know whatever that there's a, a leveling process a cultural le- leveling right where um it's like everything is just like the same right yeah. um and you know there's there's no real um there's no energy behind it there's no joy behind it like it's just like we all you know and it, and it's and and the joys that we think we have right are manufactured joys right we, we do those joys which culture says is like good you know like this is what you should be doing um and and so there's this this leveling of our 
of our reality, right? Like it becomes kind of dead in a, in a certain sense, right? Um, and and so when that's removed, right? When sort of we we take that away, um, right? That's when like the absurdity like arises and it's, it's usually at first like in that that conflict because like I, I see it for how it is right it no longer fits with with the structure that i've been holding yeah. on to right um and and so it i think it's a it's like it the acceptance is like I mean, it's, I, I'm, I'm wanting to use the word embrace here, right? Yeah. Like embracing the experience, right? That we embrace our experiences, you know, no matter what they are, right? Um, and that's the only way we can actually experience them, right? Like, um, is, is if we like, you know, bring them in. Um, like I'm way. here now, like, because if you're, say, if you say, man, I can't wait for this to be over. So I can go do this, this and that. Like you're gonna be miserable now because you're thinking about that future where you can escape. But you know, if you stop thinking, it's basically like if you stop thinking that life is a prison, right? You'll be right. set free, right? Right, uh, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I and yeah. and I think that and I think both Buddhism and and Camus, um, you know, do that. Um, um but they kind of uh well it's also if we go back to that quantity and quality thing i know he was saying something along the lines of two men born on the same the same year right <laughs> yeah Sorry, that's good. no it's great it's perfect all right, all right. um two, uh, two men born on the same year they'll have the same number of experiences right but if you're not uh focusing if you're not aware if you're not present then Absolutely. um you won't really be experiencing as much right right um yeah. and it, if you are here now then you'll kind of be separated from all those like emotions of oh, i wish i was somewhere else or you know et cetera, et cetera, because you're you're there now and and everything is kind of just just an experience yeah yeah, yeah, right. Everything becomes much more vivid. Um, yeah, in in that way, right? Um, and you know, and I think that's that's one thing. And you, I mean, of course, can't sit and like regret like you know this whole like period where you know maybe yeah. I, I was not experiencing you know the world that way. And of course, you know, I, I spent a lot of my time like not experiencing the world. Um, yeah, you know, and and um, you know, and I don't know if Cammy would say like you know, how this process works, if it's, it's like sort of an enlightenment, like, oh, now, right, like, I am the absurd person, right, like, yeah. I am always, like, living in this, this reality, right, or if, if it's, um, you know, something more like, you know, we, we have these periods where we recognize it, and yeah. we live in it, um, and I think maybe he'll talk more about that in the, the um, in the myth of Sisyphus, right, um, yeah, uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, um, you know, which, which it is. Um, but for me, it's, it's certainly the latter, right? I'm, I still like live a lot of my time, like not in, you know, sort of safe not, away from you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and that's, I mean, and to me, that's why like, I, I do things like meditation, right? Because it helps yeah. me, it helps me sort of see reality for what it is. I need that. Um, well there's this um have you ever heard of avatar the last airbender so, I no. well it's this it's this tv show this uh that this guy basically has to go and save the whole world but you know he's very you know he, he's a vegetarian he's you know he meditates and all this stuff and and he doesn't want to kill the person who's like terrorizing the world, right? Because basically has these spiritual needs and and whatever. So he he's talking to one of his past lives, and the past life tells him that hey, um, I you you have a very gentle soul and a gentle spirit, but as the avatar, um, you are more needed to this world, to this physical world 
you have a duty to this physical world that needs to be above your own spiritual needs. Mm, mm. Um, so I think uh, you having having children, you know, you're not always going to be able to be, you know, in the moment all the time, right? Or right. You, you know, because you you have kids, you have a duty to your kids. It's that's more important than your own spiritual needs, right? Right. No, that's good. Um, I don't know if you've if you've thought of that, but no, oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I think about that all the time, right? Um, yeah. 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 I think, you know, uh, I, I, th I think that's the, yeah, that's sort of important to think about, like, you know, how do we, how do we live, you know, our life yeah. in the midst of, you know, I mean, again, it's the, the sort of, you know, the Sisyphus, um, you know, sort of experience. Um, also, you know, yeah. We have relationships. We have all these things yeah. which seem to pull us away from ourselves. Um, you know, but I think that the, the question is like, how do we live those experiences or how do we live in that and still, you know, be present to it, right? Yeah. Still be free. Um, you know, and, you know, I mean, we, we were talking about, I was, I was just thinking of, of, um, of the Bhagavad Gita and, you know, that um, um, Arjuna and the Bhagavad Gita, is, okay. I don't know if you've, if you read I've read part of it, uh, not too much. So I really want so, to. I, I have, I have the book, but yeah, I just well, there you go. It's yet. on the shelf. It just needs to be read. Yeah. <laughs> so, but but Arjuna is like, you know, yeah, kind of the same thing. He doesn't want to fight yeah. in this battle, in this war, um, because you know it's it's it, he's going to be fighting his own family and and all of this stuff, and um and so he he's he has Krishna, um, who's, who's the avatar, the avatar of of Vishnu, right? So yeah. manifestation of God, um on earth as this charioteer and, and, you know, he says like, well, what should I do? And like, you know, Krishna's like, well, you know, yeah, kind of the same thing. Like you, you got yep. this gentle spirit, but you know what you are, you're a warrior, right? You're a prince. Yep. Like that's your job. You have a duty, you know, at this point to fight in this battle. Right. Um, yep. and, and so it's like, you know, how do I do that? Right. And still remain true to myself or how do I do that without, um, um, yeah, without finding some way of, of, of checking out or, or kill, yeah, doing, the, you know, it's a, a sort of suicide, right? Like, yeah. you know, how do I do this without some sort of, of suicide? Um, yeah, without like killing that old version myself, but, but, but at the same time, you're, you're attached to that version of yourself and that's what's blocking you from. Right. From yeah, exactly. Forward. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's yeah. exactly right. I think that's, yeah, I think that's the insight that like, that you have become, you've created some, vision of yourself right some way you're supposed to be and like yeah. that's you know that's not what the world is telling you you know at this moment you need to be um well and it's also well what does he say it says oh arjuna like these men are slain by me already or right yes he does go through something all that. Lines, yeah, right? yeah, you, know, yeah. you know they're they're immortal and they're fine and don't worry about it like, you know. yeah yeah <laughs> I don't know if that's yeah yeah so. So I did want to ask when did you first encounter the myth of Sisyphus? Mm, when did I first? Um, so I think it was in um, an existentialism class um, okay. in in undergrad that um, I read like just a part of it. Like we had like a reader and I read just a, a little snippet of it. I don't I don't know that at the time I was. Um, sort of, yeah, I don't, I don't know how much I engaged with it at the time. Like, I think that I, you know, I, I liked Sartre a lot at the time and um, it took me a while to really sort of come to Camus um, and to embrace Camus. And, um, you know, if somebody asks me, right, like, who's your favorite philosopher? I don't know. I think, you know, I, it, it's hard between Kierkegaard and Camus, right? Like, I think they, yeah. yeah um, and at this point, and because I think they they speak to my experience a lot more um, than yeah. than Sartre. Um and so yeah, so it was then, and then I came back to Camus. Um, so we had so I, I taught this bef this was before COVID, then right? Yeah. You took yeah. okay. So I must have been you know reading Camus um, before then because I know I. You know, I read I read the plague during COVID. You know, and really got <laughs> back into Kevin at that point. Um, but but I think you know this is interesting. I wonder if it was this you know after sort of 
getting into recovery and like yep. saying, Hey, I've got to like, you know, think about this crazy world that I'm in and learn how to live in it in a way that I'm not running away from it. Right. Yep. Um, and, um, and certainly what I was doing all the time was committing small suicides. Right. That was, that, you know, yep. each time I got drunk, it was a way of, of committing suicide for myself. Yep. And so, um, and so, yeah, so I think that, that it probably spoke to me to, to some degree, you know, at that point, and that's probably why I was like, Oh, this is great. And, you know, some, um, 19, 20 year olds, maybe they'll get something out of this too. I don't know. And if they don't now, they will, they'll remember it and come back to it in 10 or 20 years. Um, I definitely think the, um, reading the myth of Sisyphus really, um, put me in place where I got so, I like felt like I could relate to it so much and it really kind of got me like not even on a philosophical journey, but it put me on a spiritual journey yeah. um, for, for myself, which I think is, is a lot more important than philosophy. Yeah. Um, and in many ways, I mean, obviously philosophy is necessary and it's needed, but I think, uh, without that aspect of spirituality it's um i think philosophy kind of misses the point i guess Absolutely. yeah no i agree with you right and and you know the, my my approach to to philosophy um is is certainly like that, it, that it's it's got to have um you know you're putting sort of a spiritual aspect to it um yeah. you know the way i approach it in my ethics class right i i, I use the sort of purito um approach of philosophy as a way of life right um you know that Who? it's got to be something pierre ado is a pierre ado yeah so pierre p i m e r r e ado h um a d o t um and he, he um he was a student of of foucault's but anyway he um he says yeah that's what philosophy um is and or should be right it's not just about you know, arguing about interesting ideas, which is, you know, fun and all, right? right. But it's, but it's got to be, uh, it's got to um, say something about how to live your life, right? Um, yeah. and, and I like that you, you said that, that like, and I, and I think about Camus as a spiritual writer. So, you know, even yeah. though, you know, he's, he's not religious in the traditional sense, right? I think he is very much a, a spiritual um, writer, well, because I think when you hit that moment of, of the absurd, you kind of just go like, oh, wow, right? You know, you, it, it's kind of like seeing the world for the first time. Yeah, no, that's really good. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's, and that's why I, I, I think I, I, I sort of, you know, mentioned at the beginning is, is that like, you know, sometimes these can be like, you know, the, the, the encounter of the absurd can, can like feel like, your your world's like falling apart right yeah but the other times it can it can feel like you know joy at the same time and i think it's that it's just yeah. that yeah you're counting counting the world as it is for the first time and and each time so you, you know like yeah it comes to it it feels, that way. it feels fresh it feels new right it's not it doesn't get old right that's something about the absurd is it's not it never gets old it never gets boring um well and that's that uh, that's that awareness, right? Yeah. The, if, if you're aware, you notice that everything is different. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, well, and that's, a, well, that's also why I brought up the, on the Buddhism example, right? Because B Buddhism is all about awareness, all about being here present now. Right. Um, but I do. So I did want to ask you about the leap though, about philosophical mm. suicide. Yeah, good. And what is he? He kind of says. I mean, we talked about this a, a little bit earlier when we were saying, like, is Camus making a leap here as well? Um, but do you think the loop or the leap is? It is it philosophical suicide and is it illogical? I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a really good question. So you know, I, I already yeah. said like, oh, my my two favorite. Like philosophers, yeah. you know, I yeah. might say Camus and, and Kierkegaard, and yeah. so when I yeah and 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 so of course I like during reading this whole thing I'm like fighting Camus I'm like no like this cannot be philosophical suicide because you know I love Kierkegaard 
Um, and so, so I, yeah, yeah I, I, I certainly, um, when rereading it, like I, I struggled kind of with that, that, that part yeah. a little bit. Um, and I, well, I, I think there's a certain rebellious aspect to it. Right. You know? Oh, and, you're, uh, you're dark, yeah. I mean, he is, he is, is that what you're well, saying? Well, to both, to, to, to Camus. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, I guess to both of them, but yeah, like what, like what was your, your struggles with it? Cause I kind of struggled rereading it as well. Cause when I first read it, I totally agreed with everything you said, but, but the second time I read it, you know, like just now I, I disagreed with a lot of what Camus said. So, you know, the, so the, for, for Kierkegaard, right. Like the, um, you know, the book that most people know or people who are yeah. familiar with Kierkegaard at all is Fear and Trembling, right? Yeah. So Fear and Trembling is like kind of the retelling of the, the sacrifice of Isaac um, by yeah. Abraham. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, the question I, I think, you know, there is, um, was the, the command of Abraham, right, uh, by God, you know, in, in this, was that an absurd command, right? Um, and, and is Abraham like Sisyphus in this, this case, right, where, yep. where Abraham could say, okay, I'm going to do this thing um, because, you know, God's telling me I have to, um, but, you know, I'm going to like begrudge God about it and like all of that. Right. Like, or, yeah. or, or, you know, Abraham can just say, okay, you know, I'm doing this thing um, or it could do it out of fear. Right. So that's another you yeah. know, um, approach. And, you know, so Abraham, of course, is doing something that um, is absurd, is absurd, or at least is irrational um, right from kind of the world's perspective, from yep. you know, the, the ethical um, perspective, uh, and so he doesn't have anything there to to ground himself in, right? Like no. he, has, he has has nothing to to to, to hold on to, uh, and so I think that moment um, when Abraham says, you know, yes, I'm going to do this thing. Right. I think he could be, I mean, I, of, of course we can, we can talk about like what was really going through Abraham's mind. Right. Um, but, but I think, you know, I think Abraham could be um, embracing like the absurdity um, of God. Um, now, you know, it, so, so Camus says, well, you know, it's all, it's all just too irrational. Right. Like, you know, it's like they've gone too far. Right. Yep. Like, um, you know, so. so you know, he, is there he took that leap because like, because he, he said that, hey, that there's a the leap isn't believing God. The leap is um, going from a place of finding the world meaningless and then taking a leap in reasoning to like. Never mind. It's it's totally meaningful, right? There, there is a God. Right, right, right. good. Yeah, yeah. And so I think, and you know, Kierkegaard talks about this, where, um, where Abraham kind of has to vacillate between this, like, oh, you know, I am off to kill my son. Um, yep. you know, this son that was given to me to like, you know, populate, um, you know, the world essentially, and yep. um, but at the same time, right, like. I have to have faith, right? That, mm -hmm. that that God will make it okay, you know. Yeah. And and maybe it's that second part, right? That like um, where where there's this this faith that like God is going to make it all okay, right? Going to bring um, Isaac back and do something, right? I don't know, don't know how it's going to work out, but like it's going to be okay in the end. Yeah. Um, and. I think Kierkegaard says, well, no, you've got to hold on to both of those at the same time, right? You can't like just rely on, on, on the second, right? You have to, at the same time, believe like, no, I'm really killing my son here. Yes. Right. Um, and um, if, if you, you know, if you believe that that, that paradox is, well, I don't want to say that we're possible because obviously it's impossible. Um, 
But if you believe that Abraham really held both of those um, simultaneously, I think we're still in the world of the, of the absurd, perhaps. Yeah. Right? But um, but I think Camus pointing out um, that, like, well, no, like, um, Abraham is just finding an alternative route towards meaning. Um, mm-hmm. You know, um, where he he's he's going beyond reason, right? Right. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Where he's, beyond reason. Yeah. Whereas Camus doesn't. He says that you know he he should only live with what he knows. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's exactly yeah. what he's doing. Yeah. 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 Good. Yep. So, um, and, 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 you know, on one hand, right. Like if he's going, you know, only going with what he knows and he chooses to affirm this command and like kill yep. his son. Right. How can he have faith? Right. That like, it's going to yep. all be okay. I mean, right. Like it seems like that, that that's going just too far. Um, well, I did want to ask you about the um, uh, so something that I really find important in Fear and Trembling is the aspect of of Abraham being incommunicable. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of right. uh, uh, that that can kind of be compared with with how Camus, uh, when he's in that state of the absurd, or like when when anyone gets slapped in the face with the absurd, right? Uh, you can't really communicate that to people. Right. It's kind of like uh, what we were saying earlier, where, you know, the absurd can't really be expressed in words, um, at, at least fully. Um, and I think that's an important aspect there. Um, yeah. I don't know if you had anything to, to say on that on, on that topic of incommunicability, but. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's I think that's yeah, I think that's important. Um, so, yeah, so so the the. You know, Abraham, or excuse me, uh, Kierkegaard talks about you know silence a lot. Um, silence, silence, yeah. Um, and and you know that like, um, and it seems that like, like experience, like real experience, um, Like even if it's done through like you know speaking in some way, right? There's a, a yeah. silence to it, right? Where where all of that dialogue and stuff has been quieted down, um, you know, completely. Um, and because what matters in it, right? And, he, and it's interesting because here's here's another thing. Right? He talks about he talks about the, you know the absurd having value, right? Even though he wants to like say it's meaningless, yeah. he'll use the word value. And I think for it to have value, right, it's not something that can then be, you know, um, explained, you know, away. Um, and it's only in silence that it can be um, um, sort of taken in and accepted. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and it's something of the present alone, right? It's not of the future. It's not of the past. Um, and... Yeah, so it seems that that's a that's a it's a, a core part of this, and I you know going back to this sort of discussion of meditation and these sort of experiences you know that I, I I've had throughout my life. Right, one of the things about those experiences is like as soon as I start to talk about them, like I start to feel stupid or feel like I sound stupid or like oh like they're not yeah. getting this right. This isn't making any sense. Like okay, yeah. right? like so suddenly like. Um, and if I like recognize that, like, oh, like, of course, this is meaningless in, in this world too, right? So just like the absurd is, you know, it, it, as soon as I try to bring it into like the world of reason, like it's going to be meaningless. Um, it, it, it's going to break down. Yeah. You know, and so it's uh, like, yeah, so, so, so sometimes the only thing you can do is just, yeah, remain, remain silent. You know. Yep. And kind of like that quiet like quietly embrace it i guess yeah and it's and it's like and kierkegaard talks about this and i think Camus mentions something like this too where you know the absurd the absurd person um or you know for Camus, the knight of faith right like they just seem like anyone else to you know they don't seem like anything special you know um, yep. and you know i think that's that's important too right like you know, just you know 
it's like, here's life, you know, and I'm actually living it. Um, yep. It, well, and it's, I also wonder um, if someone was enlightened, I feel like you probably wouldn't notice them, right? <laughs> like you wouldn't notice that they're enlightened, right? If they were, um, or what do you think on that? Do you think if someone was enlightened, you'd like see them go, whoa, look at this person. Cause I know in, uh, in Siddhartha, I don't know if you've ever read Siddhartha, but I think they were saying how, uh, um, Siddhartha saw the Buddha or whatever. And, um, and well, like in, in this book, for some reason, Siddhartha and the Buddha are two different people. Um, but S Siddhartha sees the Buddha and then he's like, oh, this person is perfect. You know, the way they walk, everything about them is absolutely perfect. Right. But then you met the, the, uh, the guy on the ferry, right? Yeah. And, the road, the road. Yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. I know. So what do you think about that? Yeah. Good. This is, this is good. So it's, I think that there's, um, um, Maybe this is a little like sort of Taoism here, but there's like a spontaneity, okay. you know, to the person that is enlightened, right? That they yep. they act spontaneously, and I think that that that's the case with the the you know, um, the the um, the ferryman, right? The, yep. like, you know, he just acted spontaneously. He he didn't have anything to like show off, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think it's recognizable, but it's awfully subtle. Um, yeah. You know. It's, and, and if you're not looking for it, you're certainly not going to find it, you know. Um, well, I do if like you, and if you haven't And if you haven't had some experience of it, right? Yeah. Like, you're not going to recognize it. Um, yeah, you kind of have to have that uh, that experience. And uh, I do think it, it is interesting in that book, especially when he's kind of compare he's kind of comparing the Buddha to the ferryman and and no one follows the ferryman, but you know, there's swaths of people following the Buddha, right? Um, but the ferryman is just your average guy, right? And uh it, it kind of goes to show that hey, you know, you don't need to be, you know, you don't need to go meditate every day and uh, you know, do all the you know, like have the bowl for you know, psalms and everything, and um so you can just be a ferryman and find enlightenment doing that. Um yeah. well it, it's in the same way where uh, you know, the absurdism can just strike you at any street corner, you know. Right. Um, and, and maybe and maybe it's both, right? Like, yeah, yeah, know. yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, I'm not, yeah, I don't want to like you know, necessarily doubt like the Buddha's enlightenment. Um, but, no. <laughs> um, you know, but but I, I certainly think that it's, it's you know, shows up, um, you know, all over the place. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I'm just thinking of that. There's some some um, some you know Zen teachers that you know in the past have sort of lived that. Um, you know, obviously we have like you know those who, who built big monasteries and all yeah. that, right? But there's some that are just like poets, and they maybe live as hermits, or maybe they do stuff right that sort of separates yeah. themselves in, in certain ways, right? But they live just in this natural way, you know, and and um, you know, there's a childlike nature to him. There's a playfulness, right? Um, when was the last time you read Zarathustra? Um, oh, it's been a little while. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to remember if I've assigned anything. You know, I always assign, yeah, I said the childlike, right? I always assign that, yep. um, that, that piece in my ethics class when we talk about Nietzsche, but... Um, yeah, it's been quite a while since I read the whole thing. I did kind of want to ask you what you thought as far as, because when I read Nietzsche, I don't see a whole lot of the absurd being mentioned. <laughs> but, or I, I guess like maybe he mentions it, but I kind of yeah. overlook it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, I, you know, but Camus talks about Nietzsche at least, at least three times throughout the myth of Sisyphus. Yeah, so I did kind of want to ask you what you thought about uh, Nietzsche's view of the absurd, or if you had any uh, insights onto that. Yeah, good. So I think, I mean, I think that that um, I think Hemingway was very Nietzschean, right? I think that's that, kind of a way of, of, of understanding, you know, that embracing life, uh, yeah. amor fati, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, I think that. Um, 
you know, using that that story from, you know, since it's on my mind, from uh, from the myth of, uh, not myth of, uh, uh, from Thus Spake Zarathustra, right, of the the camel, um, yep. the lion, and the, the child. child. Right? Like, I think that that's, that certainly can be read um, as the experience of the absurd, right? What the process is yep. that we live our lives as camels. Um, we have the dragon, right? That's like, um, you know, telling us how we we should act, right? and how we should be the culture, you know, or whatever, you know, society or you know, religion, whatever it happens to be for us. Um, and you know, we're weighed down by it, right? That it, it it feels you know safe. We know what we're supposed to do, and yep. just sort of like one foot in front of the other. Um, and um, and so the the lion stage, right, is when we've come to recognize um, the absurdity. Right. And that's maybe and, and maybe that's a way of understanding, right, this sort of revolt and acceptance part. Yep. Right. That like there's this initial revolt. Right. But that revolt is just as much against um, m- my own uh, manufactured self and, yep. um, and and again, culture or whatever. Right. Like all those sort of false uh, uh, realities that we have. And, and so. You know, that's the, the the revolt, and then um, and then the acceptance is that moving to the, the, the child stage where yep. it's a yes, right? So you have to go to you have to yeah the no has to be there, right? You can't get to the yes without the no. Um, well, th- th- well, and also when you're looking into the scales of the dragon, um, you, you can't really look at them without seeing yourself too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Really reflecting the scales, so I think uh, in, in a sense, yeah. the lion. The, the lion can't destroy the dragon without destroying himself too. Yeah, um, no, that's good. He doesn't specifically say that, but I kind of just no, no, no. I like that. that no, I, I think that's, about it, but, that's really good. But yeah, there right, is a just, mirror sort of aspect to this whole process, yep. right? Like, yep. um, uh, and and you have to, yeah, you have to sort of, you have to see that, right? You have to, you have to see yourself, you know. And then this is, this is, I think, you know talking about like sort of philosophy as a way of life and and so on, right? Like so many spiritual disciplines and, and, you know, philosophical schools of thought and so on, right? They talk about that where, um, where you've, you've got to go through this, this sort of, you know, um, this is sort of, I guess, Christian language, but like purifying process, right? Um, Where like all of those habits and, and all those, those, those things, you have to look at them. Right. Yeah. You can't like you can't just like destroy them, you know, yeah. or, or avoid them. Right. Like, you know, then you're just going to be right back to where you were in the first yeah. place. Um, and, and so. Um, yeah. And so you have to you have to, to sort of pass through that that stage here. Um, you know, let, let the things from the unconscious show up. Right. And. Yeah. And, you know, say. Yeah, you know, the Buddhist sort of way of looking at it, like, yeah, you know, give them a little hug and let them go on their way, you know, and, and yes. um, yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, like you have to sort of let go, right? Um, yeah, like it's when you're really angry at someone, instead of having, instead of you know committing revenge you know why not just uh let your anger out and then let it go yeah yeah um yeah you know this is something like being around kids which is is, is really like great to see is you know they're just they're you know they're just so emotional but like they but their emotions flow through them you know both both like you know the joy and the and the anger and and you know the tantrums they flow through them and then they're done you yeah. know, like, and so they have to go through the emotion, right? But then it's like, okay, now I'm fine. You know, like, let's do the next thing. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Um, I wanted to ask you what, like, what are some important things that you've learned from your kids or from from being a father? Mm, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, obviously, like right now, I have three kids. So one's nine, one's five, and then a, a baby, like a, I guess, fifteen months or so. Um, 
and of course each of them is very different stages so um you know it's like babies it's like yeah everything's new um and always getting into everything right but like it's yeah. it's really cool because it's like it's like it's all the same to them right like you know we've got yeah. cats it's like one thing you have to do is like keep the baby away from like the litter box because it's like you know yeah. it's as fun as anything else you know like there's no yeah. distinction between these things and yeah. um and it's just it's it's that you know i guess that um um you know kind of i mean it's not non attachment for the baby because there's never been attachment in the first place you know or, or whatever like um there's not like a process that has to like, the baby has to go through right um you know, so that's really um, great to see. And then, you know, just. Um, and well, the baby is kind of in that, uh, like they're in the Garden of Eden, you know? Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. No, that's good. And in many ways, I think that um, that the child, right, that that child stage of, of Zarathustra, that is kind of returning to the garden. In, in a sense but returning to the garden with the knowledge of the outside world um, yeah. yeah yeah that's good right yeah and i think that's 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 why the child is not childish right but a child yeah. childlike right so there's yes. a childish yes. and childlike um yeah yeah i think that's good um and so yeah so i think yeah so that i think that of, of course just you know for all of them, you know, it's like so much learning, so, you know, just everything's interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, yep. yeah. Yeah. My the, dog's like favorite toy is, is like an old trash can. She just, she just, yeah, yeah around. exactly. <laughs> it's like, you know, you, you think you can figure it out. Well, that's it too. It's like, you know, learning to, to, to not, you know, kind of try to control situations so much. Like, yeah. you know, I was just thinking like, when you like try to like get like the perfect present for a kid yeah. and it's like well no they just want the, the cardboard box right like that's yeah. what they really want <laughs> you know yeah. um, and um you know if, if 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 they're not you know already told like this is what you're supposed to want yeah right? so obviously they're they're sort of hammered with that stuff too um, well that's interesting there too because uh like we are kind of told what we're supposed to want right we're uh yeah um, and that's kind of in our framework, but um, the the absurd strips strips that away from you, you know. They're like, oh, yeah. like I would, you know, this was just a concept that I've uh, that I've attached myself to, you know. Yeah, well, and I and I think that's important here is you haven't talked much about like politics, but like, yeah, um, but I think that that um, the absurd person is you know, is, is rejecting all of that, right? Yeah. But like the sort of the economic system and um, the political mm -hmm. system said like, this is what you should want, right? So whether that be in the fear, think yeah. of like, you know, from uh, from the period it was written, think of like, you know, nationalism or, yeah. um, or think of sort of the way, you know, capitalism, you know, functions um, to create these like desires and like this is what you need right like whatever it happens to be right i think that yeah. that's that's another aspect of, of this um you know and, and seeing yeah and, and of course we can see it and can or i can you know see that process in in my children right where like yeah. they didn't have these needs right and suddenly like you know a need arises that's totally manufactured right yeah um, and and it's like oh well you know my needs right like most of them have been manufactured, right? They're not really needs, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and well, and I manufacture a lot of my needs as well. You know, I have a long to-do list and I'm always thinking, yeah, oh, I exactly. need to get this, this, yeah. this done. But, you know, yeah. you don't really need to get any of the things right. your to-do list done, you know? Right, right. Yeah, so, the world will not fall apart. Yeah. So I guess kind of um, as a, like, uh, as we're getting closer to wrapping up here, I did want to ask you a question that um, we, we've kind of talked about throughout the whole time, but I kind of wanted to ask it specifically. Um, how does the absurd set you free? Because, you know, this and absurd reasoning, uh, mm -hmm. the last section is absurd freedom, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I, I did want to touch on that. 
yeah, what is this this liberation and this freedom? Um, and he talks, and he kind of like talks about how like these are different ideas a little bit, but um, you know, how does the absurd set you free? And you've already you already mentioned it, right? That like yeah, that we you know have, we create prisons for ourselves um, yeah. and boxes, um, yeah. And you know, the one thing I really like about his discussion of freedom right is and this this is you know i think pretty nietzschean right where yeah. he's like well i'm not i'm not giving you a theory of free will right like mm-hmm. you know and, and and maybe this is a distinction between Camus and, and sartre right where sartre like tries to present you with this like theory of free will yeah um you know he's like i'm not giving you that like i'm talking about like um like my freedom in my experience right yeah what, what that is like yeah, but I can only talk about what I know, right? And I think that's that's it's a that's really important, um, you know, that he he says that, um, and but in that right, like there is still this, you know, there's a there's a notion I think of of responsibility, right? That like, you know, whatever life has like given me, right? Whatever situation I find myself in. Right. Like, like I can choose right now, right. To, um, to run from it, to bury myself, you know, whatever. Right. Or I can choose to just live in it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, 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 and I think that like, you know, freedom here is like, not just like freedom to like do what I want. Right. That's not what, yeah. what Kevin's talking about. Right. Like there's a, 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 an experience of freedom right that this, yes. is, this is about um and feeling free you know yeah. feeling like you're free from um from society you're free from all these uh um i guess all these given like ideals and everything you know and um, yeah and of course this is this is this is you know part of an important part of camus right that was why a lot of people like Camus or, or find him insightful is he's, you know, he's like, look, like, you know, and from, from one perspective, like we're not free at all. Right. We like, we yeah. have these lives, we have to live, we have to get up, we have to do these things. Mm-hmm. You know, we eat, we work, we, you know, go to bed, eat, work, go to bed, you know, have sex, have babies. Right. Like, and it's just like this like cycle yeah. of things that we do. Right. And like, yeah. none of it is like it, in one sense, like, we're totally um, not free, um, right? But if you but but if you recognize like what's going on, right, and you you see the absurdity of that, and you you know, um, and you you have some awareness, right? Like that's when you truly can can be free, right? Yeah. Like, um, you know, and. It, and he talks about right. He, I mean, he, we we already mentioned the the mysticism, right? But I think the next yeah. paragraph he talks about like um, um, you know slaves in in antiquity, right? And like um, you know how there's there's a, a a type of freedom you know that can still be found in that. And you know I don't yeah. I don't necessarily want to say that he's a sort of a quietist about that sort of thing. Like oh like let's let like oppression happen because we know I mean yeah. I, I we know very well that Camus was. You know, he he was very active in in yeah, in but he's not talking about things on a, a societal scale, right? He's talking about right. how does the individual, the individual, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah, because he he's not speaking about what we can do as a society. He's speaking about what like what can you do like for yourself to set yourself free, right? Right? Yeah, and to exactly. to truly experience freedom, right? yeah and again there's that you know it's like that's my choice right like i still no matter what have that freedom to to you know re- reject it or say yes to it um yeah. you know which you know maybe there's a both right that's not necessary that we've talked about and it's that well it's it's again it's a it's a more fati right um love your faith and yeah. I think Camus does a really good job just kind of bringing that home in the myth of yeah. Sisyphus. And especially when you get to the actual myth of Sisyphus, you know, um, 
And I, I really think that that hits hard to a lot of people, especially uh, p- people in their 20s when they're first kind of, you know, getting out of high school, then they kind of see the the real world, quote unquote. Um, but yeah. 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 And I think that's, and, and I think that, that, that of course is, is also very Nietzschean, right? Like he just gets a lot of that from Nietzsche. Um, too. Yes. Well, uh, thank you, Jamal. We'll uh, we'll leave it off there so you can get to okay. your uh, your kids' uh, Halloween party. So. Okay, cool. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, this was fun. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Peace out.